the IMF has revised downwards its global growth forecast the most in three years. Axel Schimmelfenning is in studio with me to explain more about the body's quarterly report. Before we do that, sir, maybe a correction on your surname? Was it pronounced correctly? Yes, yes, yes. You're doing it well. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> well, let's get into the numbers. 3.5% for 2015. That's from an initial 3.7%. What are the drivers behind this uh, revision? So we see four factors that, that have panned out since we published our last forecast in, in October. Um, the first, the most obvious one that is on everybody's mind is that the oil price has come down by about 55%. And that, on balance, is, is of course a shot in the arm for the global economy. Uh, it helps in particular the oil importers. Um, we, we see that being driven as partly as a demand fa side factor, partly as a supply factor. Um, global oil demand has been revised down mm -hmm. continuously by the International Energy Agency. Um, at the same time, OPEC has not cut its own production in response to higher production from non-OPEC uh, countries. So there's more supply as well. So this is a fairly permanent shift, and we see that in the forward market, which does price in a bit of an increase, uh, and we see that as mainly reflecting a supply response. With lower oil prices today, there's less investment in, in capacity, and hence lower production, um, relatively speaking, going forward. Mm. So that's your first factor. Um, in addition to that, the unevenness of the global recovery that we've pointed to in October has actually been more pronounced than we had thought. Um, the headline number actually for Q3 has been almost the same as, as what we had penciled in, but three and three quarters uh, percent growth up from three and a quarter in, in the second quarter of, of 2014. But the underlying trends are much different. Um, on the one hand side, you see the United States where growth uh, has been stronger than, than what we had expected. On the other hand, in a number of uh, major economies, Japan, Euro area, um, we've seen growth being lower than, than what we had thought. And what we believe the underlying trend here is that there is, there is a lower medium-term growth outlook, mm. and that is already impacting investment today. Just before you carry on, because there are quite a few influencing factors quite clearly, what I want to get is the gist between the, the constant revisions. Uh, why is it so necessary to perhaps uh, review the growth outlook every quarter? Uh, uh, why, what, what's, what's the, what necessitates this? Well, so all forecasts are, are a subject to error or confidence interval, as we sometimes say in, in, in sort of technical jargon. Um, you, you, you make a forecast based on the information that you have and based on the understanding of, of underlying uh, relationships and, and trends that, that you see. Um, so forecasts are almost by nature not right. Um, you hope to get just about the right direction. You hope to get the themes of the forecast right, mm. but the number will, will very rarely be, be a spot on. Um, and then the question, how often would you revise a forecast, also depends on what is happening. Like if something very dramatic, like an oil price coming down by half, happens, then you certainly want to, uh, you know, want to update your forecast because mm. it will have major implications. Um, we do um, two major forecasts um, a year in our World Economic Outlook, which is published in April and October. Um, that's sort of a fairly thick volume, and then in between we do an update um, on the global trends to make sure anything that's new is, is fed into our forecast so that we always have the, the right picture of the moment. Mm. Something else that struck uh, at me was in your statement today, you say governments and central banks need to pursue accommodative monetary policies and structural reforms to support growth. Just a moment ago, I'm sure you heard my conversation with Brenda Kelly, who said, well, on the back of this IMF report, this is a given that the ECB will take on quantitative easing. The kind of policies and reforms and this kind of support that you want from central banks, does it entail the likes of Q QE? So our euro era forecast does incorporate an assumption that the ECB will, will start a uh, quantitative easing program. That, that's correct. In general, I think there two scenarios or two country cases that you want to want to distinguish. One is where uh, the economy is sort of below its trend growth. Yeah. There you want fiscal policy, you want monetary policy to, to be accommodative to the extent that they have the policy space. Um, in addition, we have the fact that global growth in and of itself is still too low. We're not creating enough jobs. So we need 
much more investment to raise potential growth. We need much more structural reforms to raise that potential growth so that more jobs can be created, unemployment comes down. Um, and there is sort of a, a nice link between these two, which is you can give fiscal support through infrastructure investment. Uh, and infrastructure investment also has a positive impact on, on your long-term growth potential. What does this mean then for economies like South Africa, which are quite clearly not performing at the optimum level at which we should be? Mm. So for South Africa, we've also revised down our growth forecast compared to what we put out in October, 2.1% um, for 2015 now and 25 for 2016. The, the main factor driving that downward revision is, is the new information that we and everybody else here in the country got on electricity supply. Mm. Um, new plants coming on stream much later than, than previously anticipated, meaning that the bottleneck from electricity uh, will be with us for, for much longer. Um, there's also a bit of a headwind from the fiscal consolidation that was announced in the medium-term budget policy statement by Minister Nene. We think that is the right policy step because policy space has, has narrowed quite a bit in South Africa, but there is a bit of a cost in terms of short-term growth. Um, then commodity prices more generally, yes. of course, are also down, and that's never good news for a commodity exporter. Exactly. Resource-rich countries like South Africa. Well, hopefully we're on the right track, as you've alluded to, with regard to policies. So short-term loss for hopefully long-term gain. Axel, thank you so much for your time.